Laptops just got a whole lot faster. For years, Intel has barely improved their mobile CPU performance, and when they did, they sacrificed thermals and battery life. Today that changes. In this laptop, we have 14 CPU cores that can clock up to 5 GHz, while also improving the battery life? This is the biggest generational uplift in laptop performance since at least Ryzen 4000, and maybe even longer. Oh, and this thing also has an RTX 3080 Ti in it. So just how much better will laptops be in 2022? I'll show you. Right after I show you this segue to our sponsor, iFixit. Thanks to iFixit for sponsoring this video. iFixit's I'm a Genius campaign highlights leaders and the right to repair movement and shows the world that every repair is an act of genius. Watch until the end of the video to find out how you can show the world your act of genius and how to enter to win $100 to the iFixit store. In this MSI GE76, we have the new Intel Core i9-12900HK, a 10 nanometer CPU based on Intel's Alder Lake, which has already dominated the desktop space. Alder Lake is a new CPU architecture that utilizes both performance and efficiency cores. In the case of the 12900HK, you get six performance and eight efficiency for a total of 20 threads. That's the most we have ever seen in a mobile processor. For our testing, we have two nearly identical GE76 Raiders from MSI. The old model has an 11th gen i9 with an RTX 3080, and as of yesterday, this was about the fastest laptop money could buy. As the first proper 10 nanometer implementation from Intel, it was already a huge improvement over its 10th gen predecessor. But it's not yesterday anymore. How much faster is the 12th gen in games? 15%, pretty much across the board. In CPU bound games at 1080p, we see around a 15% increase thanks to the 12th gen processor. And in GPU bound games at 4K, we see around a 15% increase thanks to the 3080 Ti. The performance improvements in the 3080 Ti are fairly straightforward. We get 1200 more CUDA cores than the normal 3080 mobile and 10 extra watts to power them. If you happen to really know your GPU specs though, the 3080 Ti mobile is still a fair ways off the 10,240 CUDA cores of the desktop 3080. What I'm more interested in though is the mobile RTX 3070 Ti. Judging by the specs, I'm guessing the performance difference between it and a mobile 3080 will be barely noticeable and laptops with the 3070 Ti start at $1,500. Still a lot of cash, but not too bad if you looked at the desktop card prices recently. <laughs> Moving from gaming to productivity, Alder Lake really starts to shine. The multi-threaded performance improvement is staggering with a 45% increase in Cinebench and the domination just continues in all of our other benchmarks. This is extraordinarily bad news for AMD since multi-core performance was kind of their thing, but AMD's real advantage on mobile this whole time has been efficiency. How has Intel done there? Very well. We rarely get the opportunity to properly test out gen over gen battery life in laptops, but I'm super glad we did today because otherwise it would have been pretty hard to believe the 45% increase in battery life with Alder Lake. An MSI GE76 Raider that takes us from a barely usable four and a half hours of YouTube viewing to a manageable six and a half. But like that's six and a half hours in a laptop with the largest battery you can legally take on a plane. Intel was very far behind AMD and Apple in terms of efficiency, so we'll have to wait until we get an Alder Lake laptop that is optimized for battery life rather than performance to see if they close the gap. We already saw in our review of the M1 Max that Apple doesn't have as big of a performance lead as they would have you think. Back then, the Asus Zephyrus G16 with an 11th Gen i9 and RTX 3060 thoroughly embarrassed the M1 Max in basically every situation where the media encoder wasn't taking the brunt of the workload. Based off that, we can pretty safely say the i9-12900HK and the RTX 3080 Ti outperformed the M1 Max in basically everything. But like, this laptop doesn't fit in my backpack and goes through battery life faster than the last verse of Rylan Bog. It freaking better outperform a MacBook. Where this battle will get a lot more interesting is when we start seeing how Alder Lake holds up in laptops like the XPS 15 and NV14 that are powerful, but designed with good battery life in mind. Fortunately, Intel has given laptop makers tons of CPUs to experiment with this generation, 28 of them to be exact. 
The H, or Halo series, are the super powerful boys like the 12900HK that we've been testing. Of those, the i5-12500H really sticks out to me. It gets 4P cores and 8E cores, which means that it might be able to dominate the mid-range gaming laptop segment. Just like you'll be able to dominate the competition if you get an LTT mouse pad. LTTstore.com. Anyway, dropping the TDP down from scorching to warm, we get Intel's new P series processors for thinner designs that still want a fair bit of power. Think of like a 14 inch Ultrabook or thinner gaming laptops. The top tier i7 1280p sounds like a weird resolution, but is actually pretty similar to the 12900HK with a much lower power budget. The rest of the P series have 4P cores and 8E cores, potentially leading to some very versatile laptops. This is where AMD and maybe even Apple might be scared. Moving to proper thin and lights, we get Intel's U series processors, most of which have 2P cores and 8E cores. These are going to be rather confusing because there are both 15 watt and 9 watt versions, but they share the same names? Ugh, Intel! Why not have the 15 watt version be the i7-1265U and the 9 watt version be the i7-1260U? This is going to have a massive impact on both performance and battery life, and I could see a consumer being like, oh, these two laptops, they have the same processor, but one gets four hours more battery life. I'll get that one. But what they don't know is that they'll also have 40% less performance. To Intel's credit though, Normally we find something dumb and confusing about their lineup immediately. For this generation we got 1138 words into the script, so that's an improvement. What does all of this mean for AMD though? Are they going to be stuck just playing second fiddle once again? My guess is it will be more of a use case dependent sort of thing. During CES, AMD announced the new Ryzen 6000 Rembrandt CPUs. If we take AMD by their word, the 1.3 times improvement in compute might be able to bring them to a similar level of single core performance as Intel's Alder Lake. AMD doesn't have a hybrid architecture though, so I doubt AMD's 8 cores will be able to take on Intel's 14 in multi-threaded applications. What Rembrandt does have going for it though are RDNA 2 graphics, aka the same graphics that power the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. AMD says there will be double the graphics performance available, and there's even ray tracing support on a freaking APU. Get subscribed because I'm super excited to review these when they come out. Does Alder Lake have an answer for this? Uh, no. In here we have the same Iris Xe graphics with 96 execution units as before, just with a 0.05 gigahertz clock speed improvement. But hey, we gotta give AMD something here. It's crazy what a bit of competition can do and Intel, I'm really glad you've come back to join the party. The real party though, are always my segues to our sponsor, iFixit. Thanks again to iFixit for sponsoring today's video. iFixit takes device repair seriously. To help support the right to repair movement, iFixit is celebrating their I am a genius campaign. iFixit wants to help motivate you to join fixers around the world and commit to fixing more things this year by giving you the chance to win $100 to the iFixit store. For a chance to win, head over to ifixit.com slash pledge to commit to fixing your devices, Share a photo of your most recent repair with the hashtag I am a genius and tag at iFixit. That's it. The last day to enter is January 31st, so head over to ifixit.com slash pledge to join the right to repair movement today. So thanks for watching, hit like, get subscribed, and if this video made you, I don't know, feel good about the computer market, maybe go check out our review of the RX 6500 XT. Uh, what a truly terrible card. Bye. <laughs>